We have an interesting request, and this request is sponsored by BunkerBasics.com. Uh, Bunker Bob, who run Bunker Basics, uh, he, he doesn't know that. But the question is about survival and bug out bags and stuff like that. <clears throat> and I only have my own experience and expertise. Bunker Bob knows a lot more. And so uh, if you want to go talk to him, I put his website there, Bunker Basics, everything, no dope, survival, shit hits the fan scenario, stuff like that. Uh, but the client wanted my opinion, so I'll give you mine. But I'm, I would uh, be remiss not to say, hey, he knows more than me. And he's a sponsor of the show, so how convenient we help that out. All right, young man uh, writes, we got a bunch of emails here. I'd like to request the following. I'm trying to put together a small kit of necessities that would help me survive should there be a descent into lawlessness and or a sudden collapse of infrastructure within the United States, which is looking increasingly likely. I live a mile north of Seattle in a small left the city of Bellingham. I think I've been there. But I'm, of course, afraid of Chaz type situation appearing here. There is also always the threat of many other things, such as a natural disaster or a nuclear war. To this end, I wanted you to suggest some sundries for some very basic small survival kit that could be kept uh, easily kept in a tiny studio apartment discreetly. So please no outlandish suggestions like AR 15s. Well, <laughs> okay. You got to find a buddy that's got one. Uh, I'm a normal, boring programmer guy in my 30s. I work remotely. I'm not a militia type or much of a tough guy at all. I, you're going to have to become one. That's that's just what's going to happen. So please go slowly with me here. One, I got a battery-based code security safe to store valuables, um, which is apparently it survived house fires. That that's not fine. That's not bad to have a little safe to store. Um, you may want to look into cacheing things um, so that if your house does burn down or someone steals and they find out where you're hiding your stuff, you still got a bunch of stuff left. And maybe if you're afraid of that, like you're afraid like, oh, someone might steal my stuff in my little apartment. Well, go bury something out in the in the forest or the woods somewhere. Or maybe have a buddy of yours hold on to it for you. So like when you meet up with your buddy, which I'm going to get to later because <clears throat> you have to have a plan. Uh you know, I'm like, oh yeah, here's your gun, by the way. And you don't have to have it in your apartment. Your your goal maybe is, is just to get from your apartment to some other place that you don't need to rely on the city or infrastructure. And then you could store all that other stuff there if you wanted to. Uh, fire resistant money bags are storing documents in cash. That's not bad. Ordered some precious metals that will store in the case. This is in the event that paper money loses value. In particular, I ordered 25 pure silver one ounce go coins and 20 grams worth of small pieces of gold bullion. Um, okay. The gold is, I, I, I'm not a big fan of gold <clears throat> because it's too divisible. Are there any brands of bullion or coinage that I should get over others that are generally more trusted or valued? I've been buying Swiss Valcambi brand, mini gold bars, American silver Eagles. Yeah. The Eagles, I would, uh, I'd go with the American Eagles because we know what that is. You could think about the Canadian maple leaves as well. Uh, yep. And if you're up there in that Northern area, the Canadians will gladly take it. What I would do though, is I would get some junk silver because even those $1 or, you know, their $1 coins that they're, uh, <clears throat> what's it called? Face value. Um, I, I would get a, a bag of junk. silver. although the problem now is that junk sil silver and gold have gone up a lot in value. I got lucky. I bought uh, a bag of junk silver and I didn't realize how expensive it was like 500 bucks. I'm like, Oh geez, you know, like, okay. You know, there's worst thing I could spend my money on. And then it went up by like 40%. I'm like, Oh, okay. You know, I'm not going to sell it, but it's, it's nice to know it went up. Additionally, what amount of each metal do you suggest? All right. My universal recommendation is 200 ounces of silver for each individual. Uh, but in a post-apocalyptic world, in which case I think bullets are going to be traded more than than silver. I would you're going to probably want some junk silver. Uh, so you, junk silver you could usually buy it by the bag at your local coin dealers, but expect to pay a premium nowadays. <clears throat> Although I did, I, I guess it came down from like twenty eight an ounce to twenty three. Uh, and should I get any platinum or palladium? No, no, don't don't get anything too. They didn't have that in the old Wild West days. You had silver. If you were lucky, you had gold. You'd not see these holding value or useful for trading in an apocalyptic scenario. Yeah, I don't see I don't see them being that valuable. I mean, they'll be they'll be too valuable is the problem. And then people just want to steal that. For, not to say they're not going to steal your silver, 
But if they find out you got gold there, yeah, now you're a target. Whereas if you got some junk silver, you know, it's divided up and hidden. That's going to be more. I'd even save copper pennies. Anything 1982 and before, like if you could just have some basic copper, that I have a feeling would become a, a more standard medium of exchange. So you don't want to go higher value. You want to go lower value, even though it might weigh a little bit more. <clears throat> Do you suggest I keep a few thousand dollars in paper money in case? Yes, I'm thinking going with the United States dollar and the Canadian dollars or euros or yen. Um, euros and yen, no, because if there's a collapse, we're not flying across the Pacific or the Atlantic, and I'd have some Canadian dollars in case Canada isn't a shit show if we are. I'm not going to ask about cryptocurrency since there's a collapse in basic infrastructure. There probably won't be much internet and won't be very useful, but if you disagree, please inform me. I always recommend some people carry some cryptocurrency because depending on how bad <clears throat> the collapse is, if it's not that bad, but you know, we decide to go full communist and people start taking your shit and nationalizing your assets, because Ocasio Cortez's clientele, their her uh, constituents, they just want to be lazy parasites. Because what work for a living? But we're New Yorkers. We're just supposed to exist. Um, I have a feeling that people will be using cryptocurrency as a way to get their money out of the United States or any other country that tries to limit capital controls. So I always, you know, and it depends on how much. Oh, by the way, don't know if you knew this. Cryptocurrency can go down and up very quickly. So it's volatile. So don't get all upset if you lose money on it. <clears throat> but I, uh, I mean, it depends. It depends. Like cryptocurrency, it's is Bitcoin at nine thousand still. Holy shit! It's back to eleven grand. <laughs> I have a hard time buying at that price. Uh, yeah, uh, I I get some cryptocurrency. Maybe not these prices, but who knows? It, it could go up. We know like 11,000 will look like this dirt cheap, um, you know, thing like, oh, I wish I bought Google when it was just $100 a share. Uh, but you have to research your own thing in cryptocurrency and follow whether you want it. Uh, you have experience using and storing cryptocurrency. Yeah, I mean, if... <clears throat> some, just some, uh, that's just me. I, and I can't even predict what will happen to cryptocurrency. It's just, again, it's an insurance policy to have. For I've never owned a gun or was really into them, obviously. If the mass mob violence and lack of law enforcement Pacific, Pacific Northwest, I will need one. What's a good, reliable, compact hack gun that, handgun that I should start with? I could afford whatever is top of the line probably if that's the best choice. I was looking at Glocks, but now I realize... There's like 31 flavors. I have no idea where to start. Um, Glocks are fine. Uh, I prefer the Springfield XD line. Um, but that's just because I, I... And my the one I got, my favorite gun is a generation old so that the new XDs have come out. <clears throat> and just like Glocks, you could get them in different caliber, 9, 40, and 45. I think 45 will be a bit much for you with the kickback. I would probably look at a 40. Although a nine millimeter would be all right too, but um, it's going to be an issue whether you could find ammo for those guns. Heck, it's going to be an issue you could find guns, but I would not spend a ton of money on them. Okay, uh, because you don't want to go either you know, super cheap either. Uh, but you're not looking for some fancy gold plated, nickel plated thing. Okay, you just want a good gun that fires regularly. Also, how much safety and shooting range training would you suggest I get so I'm at the point where I can res responsibly defend myself? <clears throat> I would take the training, get your carry conceal, absolutely, because they're going to go over the legal stuff. But then I would put at least 500 bullets down range uh, so you get used to the gun. That will also force you to clean it so you learn how to clean your gun. And I would practice without any bullets in your gun. Make sure there's no bullets at the safety is on, although the Springfield doesn't have a safety. It's a, a dead man's grip. That's one of the reasons I like it. Um, I would practice drawing. Practice drawing, and then if you're out at an outdoor range, if you want to, practice drawing and shooting. But you're going to have to be very careful not to shoot yourself. Um, and that's really more like you're walking, you got to shoot to your right. You're walking, you got to shoot to your left. Are you right-handed, left-handed? <clears throat> you know, are you going to have time to line up your shot like Mur uh, Murtoch? 
in Lethal Weapon? You know, probably not. Um, but just, and depending on your size, you're either going to want a regular size or compact. You're probably not going to want a subcompact. That's like a really small carry one. You're probably going to want a compact or regular size, depending on how big you are. I get a compact and that's perfect size for me. Uh, Glock is fine though, too. Glock is fine. Go to the gun store. Take a look at some, see how they feel. I mean, it, you know, you're not committed to any one. Uh, so yeah, I get some, I get a lot of, I like get a lot of safety. If you have the time, go down to Paulden, uh, Arizona and get the training. Although that's AR 15s. Um, and take, see if there's any kind of like shooting and drawing classes you could take while you're in Seattle. Cause I know Paulden, Arizona is going to be quite a, a distance for you <clears throat> for like any other suggestions. I have some dried lentils and rice packed up. We'll get a couple jugs of water and beef. Uh, yeah, you could get you get jugs of water. It's going to be heavy, though. Should I get a tent? Yes, a machete. I got a hatchet um, to cut down trees. And a mini surveillance system? No. Ham radio? Yeah, you could get a ham radio. Blowtorch, what are you going to do? Carry um, map gas with you? <laughs> you got to worry about weight. Um, I wouldn't bring a, bring a blowtorch. I'd have matches, but I also have lighters uh, just because they don't even have gas in them, but they got the... Uh, the flint that could start sparks. <clears throat> I got plastic. So thank you for your time. You had another one here. I said, do you have a place to go? Uh, Bellingham is 90 miles north of Seattle. Okay. So it's probably unlikely going to get there. It's not immediately the target of the BLM Chaz type degenerates, but they're, they're already targeted and attacked around random white Midwestern suburban communities in the last month. To my knowledge, it hasn't happened in Washington yet. So the military conflict with China, I doubt that. <laughs> I think the domestic result will be just be a magnification of our problems by 10. If the Chinese do something crazy like nuke major cities, a thousand. Yeah, if, if they're nuking major cities, we got bigger issues to worry about. Uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so here, let's let's go through what I got. So I kind of answered your questions there. And so I'm going to go through my bug out bay. All right. You don't want an AR-15. I understand that. You're going to need a rifle of some kind or a carbine, which is what an AR-15 is, <clears throat> preferably for hunting and defense. Because a pistol, unless you're really good, you're just not going to hit anything that well beyond 20 to 25 feet. And if, if you're really talking post-apocalyptic, you're going to want to stop them at 100 yards preferably 200 yards. And so you're going to need a rifle of some kind. It could be, I got a cheap Savage 111, which is a, a scope rifle. It's a huge bullet, but that's more for like hunting deer or making sure people at, you know, 600 yards don't reach out and touch me. Uh, but since you don't want that, what I'm going to recommend to you is there's a collapsible pistol. And I got a buddy who's got it. And I texted him. I say, hey, what is that you got? It's a pistol, but it folds in half, not the pistol itself. The pistol is fine. <clears throat> but there's a brace that opens up so it's like a rifle. It still shoots a pistol around. I think his is a nine millimeter. But it opens up so it's small. It won't be too big. Uh, it's about when it's folded up, it's a big pistol, about the size of a big pistol. But that will allow you to have something that's a little bit discreet, but then give you a little bit more accuracy. Because it putting it up against your shoulder instead of just using your hands and trying to fend off people at 10 to 20 feet. Um, so that's something you might want to look at. Uh, like I'll have I'll email you once my buddy gets back to me with the type that he has. And I've seen that before where you have pistols that have the <clears throat> um, accessories to make it more stable like a rifle. And then it's collapsible and so it's smaller. Um, me though, I, I absolutely do have an AR-15. Absolutely. And I have tons of ammo. Um, because not only you might have to battle your way out, you might have to go get food. And I don't want to sit there with a bow and arrow or snares. I want to shoot something and then, and then hopefully, <clears throat> uh, you know, hopefully society gets back to normal, but you never know. Then I, inevitably I would have to do bows and arrows then. So maybe you have a bow and an arrow at your, your place you're going. I have iodine pills. I have water filters. Um, I have rubbing alcohol. I have armor. That's probably going to even be bigger than any gun that you get, and it's heavy. Um, I have laminated maps because if the internet goes out, you got to know where you're going. I have a first aid kit. 
Uh, I do have some water, not a lot because it weighs a lot. And I do have a fair amount of food, predominantly um, chili and uh, ramen noodles. Um, I have vitamins as well, like a multivitamin. I got an axe. I got a flint and steel. We have walkie-talkies, and I have some junk silver. Right. Uh, I'm sure I got some other stuff in there, but that – oh, and a tent. I do have a tent. Sorry, I do have a tent. So that's one thing, all right? That's what I have in my bug out bag. More important than that, though, is you have to have a plan. And by plan, I mean where are you going to hide out? Do you have your team? Do you have your tribe? I have two plans depending on where it happens, right? If it happens in Minnesota, and my house is not built in South Dakota, I'm not there in South Dakota, I have a friend that I will be going and hanging out with, and we're going to his other friend's place, and we will sit there, and there's farming and water and stuff like that. And so then basically I just take shifts, protect the homestead, do whatever work it is, and we all become Amish. If I'm in South Dakota, I just hunker down at my place because the neighbors who are pretty far away, that it's not as densely populated in South Dakota, obviously. <clears throat> and water is actually somewhat uh, common out there because of all the streams that run off the Black Hills. So not too worried about that. Plus, everybody's pretty much on the same team in South Dakota. Uh, so there's that. And then also I will have to do something like, you know, it, if I'm at the compound as it were in Minnesota, I'm hunting deer, I'm gutting deer, I'm doing whatever work needs to be done. Uh, in South Dakota, it's more, I'm going to defend farmland. Uh, so the farmers, I'm like, look, I'll protect your farm. You give me, you know, some corn or something like that. <clears throat> protect your, your livestock. And, uh, cause I'm not, well, what do I, aside from security guard work, which is, you know, the only work that I have that would be podcaster, author, internet dope, is not going to get me a lot of employment. I can do a podcast for you. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to be working in the fields if I, or, you know, protecting the, uh, the compound as it were. But you need a plan. You need to go and find out where you're going to go because lone wolves are not going to make it that long. All right. So you need to. And my plan is, yeah, we bug out. <clears throat> We're going to get um, a convoy of all of our vehicles, load that up with as much stuff as we need not as much as we can. Uh, and then we convoy to my buddy's place um, and then just sit and wait it out. Um, and you need to go to a buddy's place. You got, you might want to find a group of people. I mean, what about your parents? Do your parents live out somewhere? I know uh, Leavenworth would be a great place to camp out because you guys could protect highway two from all the Seattle people trying to make it up there and steal your stuff. Although I, that, that Valley highway two has plenty of water. Water is not really going to be an issue, although it probably will be because people are dumb. Uh, but, you know, there's other places you may, and, you know, maybe you go up to, to Alaska, maybe you make it up to Alaska, or, well, Alaska too. Maybe you make it to British Columbia. Um, you got to have a plan. And that's, I would say, more important than what you got in your bag. They're both critical, they're both vital, but you really do need a plan uh, and you need a team. And that's unfortunately. <clears throat> that's the hard part is finding people like I remember trying like, Hey, you guys want to train shooting guns? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. No one shows up. I'm like, <laughs> Oh, so there you go. Uh, anyway, so go to bunkerbasics.com. That's what I would do. That's what I would do. Uh, because he knows more. He's thought of more. I think he's in New York city. So he's really thought this one out. He knows how to get out of a major Metro. But I think the fact that you're not in Seattle proper and you're on the far side, <clears throat> that's pretty good. Um, if you know enough people and there's enough choke points, you can prevent people from making up there. But if if the economy collapses that much, it's going to be traffic jams and there's going to be like very few people going to make, it, especially if gas isn't being pumped, you're going to run out of gas pretty quick. Uh, and they're going to have to do that on foot. Uh, and then you got to, you know, like Highway 2 is completely defensible. Uh, I don't know what 90, does that go all the way up to Vancouver? <laughs> Uh, I'd, I'd protect your area, find some vets, find some people that like have been in a gunfight. Like, where do we go? Where do we set up positions? Or where do we uh, set up booby traps? DJ aftershock, two bucks, six foot, two superior race reporting in sup up, <laughs> sup midget cappy. I've everything's great down here at five foot eight land. Everything's great. Weather's nice down here. Yes. Six, two. <laughs> hey, Noah, how you doing? Noah, five bucks. Had a date last week. The girl lied on the dating app and was fat. 
I shouldn't laugh at you, Noah, but it's just so common. I excused myself, went to the bathroom, and just watched your vids for half an hour. But wait, did you sit on the toilet for half an hour or did you leave? You have every right to leave, gentlemen. Pay for your food, go to the bathroom, and leave. That's all you have to do. Um, what angers me is these girls know it because they hide it. They lie about it, right? which means they know. They're not, act, they're not dumb. They're acting dumb because they know. I think Chad had another one where the... Yeah, that she's wasting your time, Noah. That's the that date last week. <clears throat> I'm sorry, man. It's just, but that's how it goes. It's and that's why, okay. Remember, remember what we learned about this? I don't know if you were here for it, Noah. We all said that you should do a date online first. You all should like Zoom or Skype so then you can tell. Uh, and that's 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 gonna save you because you at least spent what an hour on this, I'd imagine, right, Noah? Maybe it was 15 minutes away. You had to wait half an hour and then all of a sudden like, oh, and then 15 minutes back and that threw your entire night off. Well, what a five minute conversation ha uh, uh, hurt you if you guys just Skype or Zoom before you uh, you go on a physical date. Uh, Vinny Rondo, let's celebrate the death of TikTok, Cappy. Why? What happened to TikTok? TikTok? Did that go under? What happened to TikTok? What uh, <clears throat> what's going on with TikTok? New York Times. They're gonna make me. Oh, security concerns. Oh, Zarik Farid. That lying sack of shit. Oh, it's a video. I don't want to watch the video. <clears throat> President Trump's talking about banning the app. TikTok. May also sell its U.S. operations. Let's sort it all out here. Oh, what's going on? Oh, and I got to log in. I don't want to log in. Trump administration officials have been increasingly concerned that the Chinese government could get access to information about Americans who use TikTok. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's a concern. Trump says he will ban TikTok through executive order. Is that what he really said? Sarah Cooper, the reason Donald Trump wants to ban TikTok. I highly doubt it, Vogue. <clears throat> uh, Chinese owners offered a forego stake to clinch U.S. deal. Here, maybe Reuters will tell us what's going on. China's ByteDance has agreed to divest the U.S. operations of TikTok completely in a bid to save the deal with the White House. After President Donald Trump said on Friday he had decided to ban the popular short video app, two people familiar with the matter on said on Saturday. <sighs> I'm not a presidential advisor, but I'd just be like, what do you care, Donald? U.S. officials have said TikTok under its Chinese parent poses a national risk because of the personal data it handles. ByteDance's concession will test whether Trump's threat to ban TikTok is a negotiating tactic. Well, it could be. He's Trump or whether he's intent on cracking down on a social media app that boasts it has 100 million users in the United States. Trump reported on board Air, on board Air Force One late on Friday that he would issue an order for TikTok to be banned in the United States as early as Saturday, not the deal that you have been hearing about that they are going to buy and sell. We are not an M&A country, Trump said. Ba -ba, ba -da -ba, ba -da -ba. <clears throat> I guess, I guess. I guess we could celebrate the death of TikTok. I don't, I'm not against people want to go out on TikTok. That's fine. DJ Aftershock 5'8 guy, where are your Nike high tops? I uh, I don't support companies that hate my race and lecture me. I don't. I do not support racist companies. I just don't. I don't. I don't support companies that hate me, and do it as a marketing gimmick to get more money. I don't support companies that treat the uh, minority people they're targeting to swindle them out of 80 bucks for shoes you don't need and would be better spent on a degree in engineering. Nike is just a despicable company. Despicable. Uh, hang on. Nietzsche Z. Polska. Oh, I think that's Polish. I'm sorry if I botched that, buddy. Uh, five bucks. As soon as I'm able to, I'm bailing out of the U.S. and moving to Poland where the ruling party just won re-election. Long live Poland. Okay, good. Maybe I'll have to go check out Poland. It's on the list. 
<clears throat> it's on the list. It just looks like it's going to be cold as hell. Uh, unless I get in the far southern part. Uh, but I... Uh, of all the things I got to do. Look, I'm doing asshole consulting. <laughs> I dare take a day and a half off this week. I'm doing this so I can do my seminar tomorrow so I can... Maybe that's why I'm kind of depressed. Is it's just so much bleeping... Yeah, Nike uses sweatshop labor for the $100 shoes and then lectures everyone. Right, right. No, I know. I know. Hey, but they hired that loser, you know. That, uh... All right, there you go. Questions, answers, assholeconsulting.com. Remember, this is a good book, actually, to buy um, if you're worried about a collapse. Get reconnaissance, man. Find out where to live in the United States, where you belong. So you're with your peeps. with your, You're with your homies. With people that, uh, yeah, let's go shoot some deer. We'll have some good uh, venison. All right, we'll see you guys later. Toodles.